They say you shouldn't cry into your beer. He literally cried into it. By the time I arrived, he was already on the fourth or fifth. Something happened and I was a little late. Sliding into the chair next to him, I pointed at him and soon another beer appeared in front of him. I had a boiler maker. It was terrible outside. Light rain, piercing wind. It felt like grains of sand were being thrown into my face. I needed to warm up quickly. I dropped a shot of brandy into the mug and drank it in one gulp. The next one went even easier. Afterwards, I returned to the beer and managed to achieve the desired feeling of warmth. I'll probably drink it slowly until I leave. Tony was starting to lose control, so I took a table and ordered him food, asking him to hold off on drinking for a while. I wanted him to be sober enough to fully understand our conversation. He nearly inhaled a dozen hot wings and a large order of fries. Probably shouldn't have skipped lunch. I knew he would never find her in an hour, and he did. The bitch was right in front of me, and then she just disappeared. I checked her mom, her friends, her colleagues. Nobody knew anything. He paused and took a sip of beer. Do you think Chris could cheat on me? We've only been married a year. Could she do that? I let him chat for a minute before I stopped him. Tony, be honest. Isn't that how you want her? His mouth opened for a second before he started cursing. You bastard. How could you say that? I tried to keep a straight face, hoping he wouldn't be able to see my eyes in the dim light and alcoholic haze. I can say this, Tony, because it's true. You were both married when you started dating to each other's best friends at the time. There is precedent here. If she cheats on one husband... What's stopping her from doing the same with the other? After all, she already has a little practice. She's probably very good at hiding it. He listened intently. You could almost see the thought resonati through his confused brain. I insisted. Maybe she spends a lot of time with friends. Does she go to bachelorette parties often? Have you ever wondered when you go bowling and she doesn't answer her home phone, where could she be? or if her cell phone goes straight to voicemail and then she calls back a couple of minutes later. Out of breath? All this is easy to explain. Motive and opportunity, Tony. If she wants to cheat, she'll find a way and there's nothing you can do about it. No, no, he whined, holding his head. She loves me. Says the man who was hugging Gloria when I walked in. Let me guess. You just needed someone's shoulder to cry on. Gloria was a well-known, easy-to-reach girl. The girl had problems. She was beautiful, not stupid, but for some reason she had a hard time saying no. She flirted with me, and I even took her on a real date. Most simply met her at a bar, bought her drinks, and took her to their home or a cheap motel. I treated her to dinner, took her dancing, and at the end of the evening I took her home, we exchanged a couple of very pleasant kisses and parted ways. The next evening she was all over me. Why did you go away? because the date ended with the axis. By the way, I really enjoyed it. I would love to do it again. The answer will be yes whenever you ask, she said, smiling. But you know what I mean. You know that I would try to make you happy if you came to me. Why? Why what? She asked, clearly confused. Why would you want to make me happy? Because I asked you out? Tried to give you a nice evening? Because you thought that was what I wanted? Something you felt you owed me? Newsflash, baby. I like to get to know someone I'm interested in. See if we're a good fit, if I want to continue this after the first date. I'm 32. My days of fun and grooming are long gone. If that's all you want, every guy in this bar and some women will be happy to be your fuck buddy. It's just not about me, honey. Are you sure you're a man? You're not some hero from a novel brought to life through some strange curse or magic, are you? Just a guy, I laughed. Maybe a little unconventional, but still just a guy. We talked a little more. Right before we parted, she asked me a question that was difficult for me to answer. What's wrong with me, Chill? Why do I do this? And please, be honest. I can handle it. I sighed. Honey, I don't really know you that well. But I'll tell you what I think, base it on what I know. I think something in your past has really damaged your self-confidence, damaged your sense of self. This could be the reason why you sleep with anyone who asks. You're an attractive woman, Gloria, but spending time in this bar is wearing you out. Not to offend you, but you have a little tummy, and your skin is suffering from lack of sunlight. I watched her face as she absorbed my words. 
Strangely, she didn't seem offended, rather thoughtful. Here's what I recommend, Dr. Chill. Spend less time in bars, join the gym, take a fitness class, maybe start running, spend more time outdoors, add the word no to your vocabulary, and Gloria, do it for yourself, not because I or anyone else tells you to. Learn to love yourself before you try to find love with someone else. She nodded once or twice, stood up, kissed me on the cheek, and left. I didn't see her for two weeks. Turning my attention back to Tony, perhaps I should have been more sympathetic to him, since I too had been cheated on. Four years, and it still hurts. I believe this is the same thing she said to her first husband every time she returned home after meeting you. She may even have meant it, who knows for sure. You probably said the same thing to your wife at the time, perhaps you really believed it then. When did it stop being a hobby and become a relationship? I had him reeling, and I had no intention of stopping, even as painful memories surfaced. He needed to see what kind of person he was. Her husband worked so hard. I mean, he was my best friend, but he was so serious all the time. My wife wasn't that bad, but sometimes she had to work late. I called, hoping to get through to Charlie, but he didn't, and we would finish talking. We started having dinner together from time to time. Charlie knew about it. We didn't try to hide it, and he even thanked me. Jen, his wife, was looking for a promotion, so she worked late, even though she didn't like it. She was fine with us spending time together, saying she knew I was safe from temptation if I was with her best friend. He paused, a slight smile appearing on his face. It was an accident the first time. We got drunk. I couldn't even drive. I had to call a taxi to her house. We opened another bottle of wine, and by the time it was finished, we were on top of each other. God, how did we? It was bad the next morning. We swore that it would never happen again, and that we, we won't tell anyone. We held off for about four months before it happened again. Jen was in Cleveland and Charlie was in Atlanta. We didn't even leave the house. We, they looked at each other, and I grabbed her hand, dragging her into the bedroom. She tried to stop me, but not very hard. I was so ashamed of making love to her in their bed, but I couldn't stop myself. We made love in every possible position for two days. The dam was broken. We started meeting when they were in town, long lunches during the day at their house since she wasn't working. We got careless and one afternoon they both caught us off guard. Jen was screaming, he was screaming, Chris was crying, and I was stunned. I was about to hit Charlie when Jen hit me with her bag. It looked like she had filled it with rocks, but it was just junk she always carried around with her. She was able to dislocate my jaw. It still hurts when it gets cold and wet. He paused, rubbing his jaw, remembering. What happened next? I asked, already knowing the answer. We're all divorced. I got ripped off pretty bad at the separation because it wasn't a no-fault divorce state, and Chris didn't turn out very well either. She got 40% to his 60. He insisted on selling the house if she couldn't buy out his share, knowing how much she loved it and how many hours she spent making it a showpiece. There was no way she could do it, so they sold him. She also received a minimum alimony payment of three years or until she remarries. The business was excluded due to a preliminary agreement. But you told me you got married less than a year after that, I interjected as he paused to take a drink. Didn't that cost her alimony? Yes, it cost her alimony, but it wasn't that much anyway. I had a good job, and she went back to work. It gave us a decent living, not the same standard of living as before. But our bills were paid, and we had a little left over. We were talking about trying to buy a house for next year. Well done, guys. I once owned a house many years ago. Ownership is wonderful. Yes, I remember it well. He sighed. Yeah, well, plans might change. I just don't know now. Cheer up, I said enthusiastically. I'm sure it's nothing. Let me tell you about my evening. I met someone, a real beauty. She's everything I could want in a woman. I think she has feelings for me, but there is one but. She's already married. His drunken look returned. You are a cunning one. I didn't think that you would prey on married women. Be careful, brother. I know from experience that some husbands can get quite irritable if they find out. He paused, grinning. Still exciting, right? Like hunting an endangered species or racing a Maserati at night. You know it's wrong and illegal, but that's the fun of it. I sighed. 
Well, I doubt I'll continue. Still, she's one amazing woman. Let's have another drink with me and I'll give you a ride home. We can pick up your car tomorrow. He grumbled, but agreed. He already had one DUI charge and couldn't afford another one. I looked at him as I drove him. He was unconscious and drooling. He would never have guessed if I had not given him crumbs of information, making general remarks, asking vague questions. All this, and the fact that he did not receive, made him tormented by suspicion. He couldn't concentrate on work, didn't sleep well, and now probably self-pleasuring himself regularly. I stopped by his garage. His wife Chris came out expecting to see his car. What are you doing here, Chill? Where's Tony? He's asleep. I'll carry him into the house if you open the door. Her eyes narrowed in anger, but she helped me carry him into the house and lay him on the bed. She took off his shoes, loosened his tie, and stepped back. That should be enough. I'll sleep in the guest room tonight. Thanks for bringing him home. You're a better friend than he deserves. I'm definitely the one he deserves, I thought as I offered her coffee. I'm not drunk, but I did have a little to drink. We have the day off tomorrow, so I'll come by after lunch and take him to get the car. Is that okay? Luckily, it wasn't too late. He was drunk before 10, so she agreed and we spent a pleasant 90 minutes talking. I think she was a little lonely, so I directed the conversation towards her, learning everything I could. Why did I do this? Because she was the married woman I was interested in, and I fully intended to take her away from him. Was I a scoundrel? Absolutely. But I had my reasons. Before I turned into an epic asshole, I thought I was a pretty nice guy. Didn't drink to excess, didn't use substances, didn't gamble, didn't chase other women. Sandy, my wife, said I was supposed to be what Boy Scouts strive to be. I worked hard at a decent job, loved my wife, even went to church. It seems, however, that Sandy didn't want a Boy Scout, she wanted an asshole, and she found one. Then she found someone else. When I caught her, she was already with the third asshole. What I wasn't prepared for was her impudence. It seems that by giving her everything she wanted, I gave her an excessive sense of entitlement to everything. Oh, stop it already. I still love you. I just need a little more. You've been getting yours for most of the time we've been married anyway. It hasn't hurt you yet, has it? I made sure they were clean, and I tried not to take up our common time. Throw a tantrum, do something stupid, and I'll take everything you have. By that time, she had already taken everything I had. Everything else was just things, and things I could always buy again. The lawyer I hired said almost the same thing. The fact that she confessed meant nothing without proof. Even so, the best I could hope for was 50%. Did I hire a private detective, wiretap her house, put a GPS in her car, bug her purse? No. I bought a small voice recorder at Best Buy for $39 and called her and suggested she try again. It's about time, she snorted, telling me where and when we would meet. And don't try to do anything stupid, I'll know. Well, that plan failed. I asked a friend of my parents and her husband to come to the restaurant she had chosen and record a conversation from three tables away from us, using what she had seen on TV. She was partially deaf and had headphones and a small phone-sized box that amplified the sound. She managed to record the entire conversation. I still have that recording. Instead of trying to make peace, she spent 40 minutes explaining to me my new role as a happy cuckold, listing a whole list of rules that I had to follow. I could barely keep a serious face, told her I would think about it, and left. She didn't even offer to hug or kiss. She just walked away. My marriage didn't end with a bang. It didn't even deserve a whisper. But he deserved a smile from my lawyer. He even laughed when I told him that I wanted her to have everything. The house, the cars, the boat, and so on. She also received all payments. All I took was 20000 from our savings, which she, in her arrogance, did not close and disappeared for three years. I had a skill set that seemed to be in high demand in the Middle East. No, I was not a mercenary. I had one real fight in third grade, and I lost badly. My father put me in boxing. I was pretty good at it, but I didn't take it seriously. I knew the production lines. My company produced apple juice and puree and did contract work for a sports drink company during the off-season. 
We had a new labeling machine that no one knew how to set up or repair. The instructions were terrible, and the company couldn't send anyone to help us. So I experimented, and we learned through trial and error. I have completely rewritten the manual, keeping the directions simple and adding a troubleshooting chapter. When production increased by 30%, everyone took notice, and soon the corporate guys came to see why. The beverage company ended up giving me a receipt for the instructions and using them at their other locations. They offered me a job, but it was in Chicago and it was February, and my wife quickly said no. The episode brought me recognition, and a bounty hunter called offering me jobs in different places with different companies, all of which I turned down until the marriage fell apart. The next time he called, I told him I would consider an offer if he could find me something as far away from where I was as possible. He fell silent for a second. What about Saudi Arabia? They're really looking for someone with your skill set. Wow. Well, I asked for a distant place. I didn't know they grew apples in Saudi Arabia. It's not apples, it's water. It's actually quite an interesting project. They produce fresh water from seawater and sell it along with the extracted sea salt. Nothing is lost. They really need a production manager, and the salary is great. Where's the catch? There has to be one. He sighed. The catch is that this is Saudi Arabia. You will be eight miles from the nearest town, and if you go there, the company will not be responsible for you. It is unlikely that you will be killed. Kidnapping for ransom is a big fashion now. But there will be one week of vacation every quarter, and they'll even pay for a flight to wherever you want. The salary is three times what you make now, and there's a signing bonus of $15,000 after the first year, $10,000 the next, and you have to sign a contract for two years. He continued his presentation. On the other hand, room and board are provided, so your living expenses are limited to whatever extra you want. You work 12 days, two days off, and as I said, one week off every quarter. Think about it. I hesitated until she did a really stupid thing. She and her instant man were in the parking lot when I finished work. I saw them and walked past, thought and returned to her car, standing out of reach at his window. Chill, come to me, this has been going on for too long. She frowned and he had a stupid smile on his face. I can hear you perfectly from here, bitch. You need to leave. I have nothing to do with you just like your bully of the month. Does he know that he is the third since our wedding, or have you already confessed your true love to him? She was about to say something, but he beat her to it. I guessed I wasn't the first, but I intend to be the last. She's found a real man now. I'll keep her in line. I liked her instant frown. I bet that's what her first one said. I hope you do a good job. This bitch takes a lot. Her favorite line is, I want... And if you've ever touched snow, you'll get an idea of how cold yours will be. Bed until she gets what she wants. Now get lost and don't come. Here again. In fact, if you can get that bitch to never talk to me again, I'll make it worth your time. Ever since we broke up, I met some real beauties. Next time she turns you down or calls you small, call me. I'll see if I can't help you out. I'm really surprised when she told me about you. She said yours is nowhere near as big as mine. You'll just be easier to control, and if she wants more, she'll start looking. She did this to me three times, and I had no idea. Think about it. I put my hand on the zipper. Do you want to see him, honey? One more time for old time's sake? When I leave, he will leave with me. She was furious. People leaving the building could hear the conversation and smile widely. She was so red in the face that she could have had a stroke from me. I'm going to beat you, he shouted as he opened the door. I was standing just out of reach, and when he stuck his foot out, I grabbed the door with both hands and pushed hard. He didn't expect it, and I heard a crunch and he screamed. I stepped back and pulled out my phone, dialing 911. Soon the police arrived, then the ambulance. Both bones in his lower left leg were cracked. They spoke to the witnesses that I asked to stay, and after the third one told them that he had threatened me, they simply filled out a report. My soon-to-be ex was furious when she found out I wasn't getting arrested. Why don't you arrest him? She screamed at the policeman. For what, madam? As far as I can tell, he never threatened violence, and it is still legal to insult anyone. 
Your friend told him he was going to hurt him when he got out of the car and he acted in self-defense. You might want to go to the hospital now to check on your friend. He turned to me. Want a restraining order against them? That would be pretty easy after they read my report. Might save you a lot of trouble in the future. He stood with his back to her and grinned. Thank you, officer. I hadn't thought about that. I'll be filing my paperwork first thing tomorrow. I looked at Deb and grinned. She sucked in a breath but decided not to speak, got behind the wheel, and drove away. I had one more shot left. If I'm not mistaken, that car doesn't have insurance, officer. It might be worth checking out. Since the car was in my name, I canceled the insurance two weeks ago. Surprise, bitch. She was standing next to the car, trying to explain the situation 20 minutes later when I drove by. I pressed the buzzer and waved. She looked at me, and it dawned on her. I could almost hear her screams as I drove away. Saudi Arabia was interesting. It wasn't fun. It wasn't torture. It was just boring. All we did was work, eat, and sleep. We had satellite TV, the latest movies on video, a gym, basketball, and tennis courts. We had the internet, so we could chat with friends, surf Facebook, even take online courses. There were few women in the workforce, for obvious reasons. Those that were were usually married to another employee. Mixing so many men with so few women was naturally a recipe for disaster. More than half of the couples either left before the end of the contract or divorced. I kept my hormones under control until I made it to France every quarter. Despite the impoliteness and low opinion of Americans, I have found that French women still enjoy having sex with us, especially if you spend money on them. I've learned to avoid big cities. Small towns were usually a little friendlier. The girls were cleaner. The prices were lower. I loved the Riviera, as well as the nude beaches. I visited a couple of casinos and watched fools lose money. I myself played a little. The key word is a little. Just so that I wouldn't get kicked out. Placed a bet on a game whose name he could not pronounce or understand. And allowed the bet to play five times before claiming the winnings. I was shocked when they told me that I had won 80,000 euros. Not knowing what to do with them, I deposited them into my casino account. On my next vacation, I was given a small room at a discount and all the extras. I lost 8,000, which pleased the management. The next time I returned them and won another 20,000. The next time I drank a little and did something stupid and lost 40,000. I never went back there again. Surprisingly, the years flew by quite quickly. I decided, thanks to my gambling winnings, that I would not stay next year. They surprised me when I told them this by offering me a position as assistant manager with a 40% salary increase and a signing bonus of $30,000. After several days of deliberation, I signed the contract. I contacted a lawyer and talked to my mom and stepbrother once a month to keep in touch. My ex, to put it mildly, was not happy when I left the country. I gave power of attorney to the lawyer. It was all quite simple, actually. She received all the marital property minus the 20000 I took. The value of the assets was much higher than the debts. So despite her objections, the judge divorced us, saying that the assets would completely cover any alimony that would have been assigned to her. Of course, she couldn't afford to support everything without my income, and her new man left pretty quickly, saying he wasn't going to pay for something that would never be his. She managed to sell the house for a small profit, as well as my boat and everything else, and left town. I continued to work for another year as a plant manager. I might still be there if my mom hadn't called me. She cried. This is Charlie. I was with him a terrible accident. You need to go home. Charlie was my half-brother. Mom married his father 12 years ago, three years after my real father disappeared. He was a good man, treated my mother well, and seemed to love me. After a year, I began to introduce him as my father, which he seemed to like. Charlie was about 10 when they got married. I never had brothers or sisters, but I was old enough to enjoy him. I made his day when I broke up a fight after school one day. He was losing when I intervened. I was a high school student and he was in his first year of high school. The schools were nearby, and I followed Charlie so that we would ride home together in the car. Get away from him, you idiots. 
If you touch my brother again, I'll tear you apart. I was a pretty big guy, and the 12- and 13-year-old bullies quickly backed down. I boxed, as I said earlier, even won a regional championship when I was 15, but I soon realized that I could never make a career out of it. However, the skills I acquired came in handy at times. That day I found my old gloves and practiced with him. Soon we started sparring or training four days a week. It paid off when a year later he knocked out two bullies without them even teasing him. I only had five weeks left on my contract and I told them I wouldn't be renewing it. It was time to return home. Under these circumstances, they released me from the last weeks, wishing me luck and asking me to remember them if I wanted to return. When I arrived, he was in a coma and things were bad. What's happened? Mom sighed. Everything has been going wrong for him lately. He lost his wife because she cheated on him with his best friend. Then his company closed. He started drinking. They say that was one of the reasons for the accident. We prayed incessantly, but eight days later he died. His ex-wife appeared for a few minutes at the farewell. I was going to the toilet and saw a blonde hugging my mom. When I returned, she was no longer there. She didn't come to the funeral. It turned out that I was the executor of his will. It also turns out that even though his company closed, they paid him his full salary and provided benefits for six months. There were two weeks left when he died, so his insurance paid most of his medical bills. He also had death insurance from the company for 50000 double compensation. Since he died in an accident, she paid. He recently changed the recipient to me. He also had a private policy for the same amount, in which mom was named as the beneficiary. So we both received 100000 His savings covered the remaining medical bills. I asked my mom about his ex-wife. He got married about eight months after I left, and I never met her. I liked her. She was a sweet little thing, trusting and gentle. I think she really loved him. If she loved him, why did they divorce? He left her alone too often. He was obsessed with success, and his job required travel and long hours. His best friend, the serpent, seduced her. He was married, so he destroyed two marriages. She begged Charlie to forgive her, but he was too hurt. In the end, she married the serpent. It didn't take long for their marriage to fall apart. She doesn't deserve it, but he does. Here I am. Between my, I had a little over 400000 in salary and life insurance, in cash. I didn't have to look for a job right away, although the headhunter I used to work with called me almost every week with offers. I told him I wanted to take a few months off and I would call when I was ready to go back to work. I talked to my brother's friends. I talked to the snake's ex-wife. He's an asshole. I was too in love with him to see it. I wish I could say I hated her for cheating, but she was just as much a victim as I was. I can't believe she married him. Well, by now you've guessed that the woman I seduced was my brother's ex-wife and the snake was Tony. I did my research before deciding what action to take. Although I'm mostly over it, my experience with my wife has left me with a low opinion of cheaters. I found Charlie's diary on his computer, spanning six years. He wrote about meeting Chris and how he fell in love with her. He filled three pages with expressions of joy when she agreed to marry him, more planning for their future together. Over the past year, he had expressed concern about the times he left her alone, fearing that she might become distant from him, worrying about the naivety and gullibility that had partly drawn him to her. The discovery of her betrayal was described in intermittent deliriums and bouts of deep despair. Even then, he might have forgiven her if Tony hadn't given him the tapes of them recording together, revenge for his own wife divorcing him. His last entry was two days before his death. Chris called him, crying, begging for a chance to talk to him. He thought about it, and Tony found out and sent him some more tapes. Charlie seemed to think that Chris didn't know she was being recorded. He had been drinking the night he died, but an autopsy showed he was well below the legal limit. I think he had too much on his mind and wasn't paying attention. It was surprisingly easy to fit into their lives. I got a job at his company, earning about a third of what I was earning abroad. I shrugged my shoulders at an interview when the HR manager asked why I was here and not abroad. I was tired of it, and it was lonely. When all you do is work and you see women every 13 weeks, you don't have a normal life. 
You can't meet the one when your address is wrong. This satisfied them, so the next week I was working next to him. He was just as arrogant and selfish as I thought. Within three weeks, I was invited to their stag party at the local pub every Thursday, where I plied the cheapskate with drinks until he passed out. I talked to other guys, and every one of them didn't like him. Watch your woman when he's around. He's a jerk, but he has a way with words, and when he turns on his charm, he could talk a nun into taking off her panties. Sad, really. His wife is the sweetest creature you can meet, and she is also very beautiful. After a third trip to the pub with them, I ended up taking him home. I drove up to the house and knocked lightly on the door. When she opened it, I was almost speechless. I saw photographs, but they did not convey everything. It could be said that she had a good figure under that robe. Her almost platinum hair burst out of free tail. Her eyes were so blue that they were stunning at first. Despite their beauty, they were sad, tired, and seemed older than her body. Suddenly, I felt unsure of my path. Hi. I don't know if Tony told you about me, but I'm chill. We've been working together for a while now. We went a bit overboard today and things got out of control, and we decided it was best not to drive him. She shook my hand hesitantly, then held the door while I half carried, half led him into the bedroom. He fell onto the bed like a fallen tree and instantly passed out. I started to tidy it up, but she told me to leave it. Chris walked me to the door, thanked me for my concern, and began to close the door. Wait a second. Tell him to call me if he needs a ride to work in the morning. He can pick up his car on the way. It was nice meeting you, Chris. Good night. After she thanked me again, she closed the door. I found a way to meet them socially. Frankly, Chris had a stunning great figure and long blonde hair. She had a bow-shaped mouth and really great legs. They seemed to be talking about how fantastic they must be to hold such an amazing butt. She seemed nice. Chris frowned a little when we were introduced, trying to remember me in her memory. I didn't have the same last name as Charlie or my mom, and she had never seen me before. She probably saw my photographs, all taken many years ago. I got bigger and had much shorter hair and a goatee. Finally, I dropped a bomb on good old Tony by sending him a tape of me having sex with Chris. I blurred my face so he couldn't find out who the man was who slept with his wife. He raged at me, promising death and maiming to whoever he caught. He also promised to kick Chris out. I'm going to teach this bitch a lesson first. She won't have much to offer a new man with her looks when I'm done with her. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard you say, Tony. Is she worth going to jail for? Let her go, man. I really hoped he would ignore my advice. I didn't want her to be physically harmed, but I wouldn't mind seeing him in jail for a bit. I called Chris. Time to move on to plan B. Tony found out. I don't know how. We must not have been as careful as we thought. He's pretty angry and on his way home. Go to my house, pull into the garage and close the doors. Do not open the door. If he comes, call the police immediately. I'll be home soon and we'll plan what to do next. I already knew what I would do next. The house was rented, the car was leased, and my job was almost a joke. We were planning to leave the city as quickly as possible. She had already moved a lot of small things and did not need furniture. I did ask her to go to the bank and withdraw exactly half of their money from their checking and savings account, putting it in an account in her name only, mainly to piss him off. It worked. I'll kill this bitch, he was raging at work. He had just been handed the documents, in front of everyone. Leave it. From the looks of it, she didn't take anything more than she would have gotten anyway. Let's say you find her and beat her to a pulp. You get a free trip to jail, and any money you have left goes towards bail. And lawyers, you might even do jail time. She left you behind, boy. Tommy, the other friend, was actually being reasonable this time. Surprisingly, Tom is right this time. She clearly doesn't want to be with you anymore. Let her go and find someone else. It seems pretty easy to you. He boasted a lot about his abilities. The guy grinned, thinking about the possibilities of the future. You're right, I guess. Still makes me angry, really. And I still want to know who that bastard is. After moving, I sent him a nice video without blurring my face. When the sex scenes were over, 
where I smiled at the camera, explaining in detail why I did what I did. He was my brother, you son of a bitch. Good guy, and he didn't deserve the crap you put on him. In my opinion, one of the reasons he died was you. You need to think about your lifestyle. Ben sent me a photo of your face after he was done with you. I wonder who told him you were hitting on Judy. Oh, wait, it was me. My best hope is that the next time you sleep with someone else's wife, the man will be angry enough to kill you. If I find out, I'll keep digging until I find this guy and talk to him. My best advice to you is to move and start over. The guys are watching you now. The word has spread. I later found out that he actually tried with another woman and received two broken ribs for his efforts. It's not my fault. The guy found out on his own. If he hadn't done this in the bar, Tony would have been killed. The guy had to pay for his hospitalization, do six months of community service and a ten-ganger management counseling. Much of the trail consisted of a detailed description of his past exploits provided to me by the lawyer. After the verdict, the judge told Tony he needed to find a new hobby before his current dalliance with married women killed him. I was actually present at the trial, ready to testify. After the lawyer heard my story, he refused, but asked me to come anyway to keep him on his toes. I could tell by the look in his eyes that he wanted to lunge at me, but this time he was smart enough to listen to his lawyer. We returned to my hometown. The first time we went to visit my mom, she was shocked. We had a nice time, and after we got home, I explained why I did what I did. She cried as she realized she had been used again. What will happen now? Are you going to kick me out? You got your way and took your revenge, so what's the end of me now? I deserved her scolding, so I listened silently until she ran out of words. You're right. I'm a terrible person. But if you admit it, you deserve at least some of it. I had every intention of kicking you out when I was done, but I actually started to develop feelings for you. Here's a proposal. Stay with me, at least until we sort out our feelings. If you want to leave, or I decide you should leave, I promise to give you enough money so you can find a place and live fairly well for six months. After this, you will be on your own. Agreed. She accepted the proposal and we lived as husband and wife for eight months. Chris decided that constant sex was the way to my heart and almost killed me with sex for the first six months. And she was the best I've ever been with. Some people have a talent for drawing, others write, some are mechanical or mathematical geniuses. Her talent was in sex. She was creative, funny, and there wasn't anything two people could do that she wouldn't try. Outside of sex, I found her funny and charming. I asked her what she wanted to do with her life when we first met, and a month later she showed me ceramics. They were works of art made of clay, funny, sad, some mainly for decoration, but many items were functional. Most surprisingly, they were her work. It turns out that she was a student of her uncle, one of the famous ceramicists in the region. He was a well-known figure, even having works in the National Gallery and the Smithsonian Institution. She wanted to start doing it again, so I rented a small building for her and bought everything she needed to set up a workshop. The sex was so intense when I told her what I'd done that I was afraid if the blood didn't return back to my brain, I would suffer permanent brain damage. She worked six days a week for three months, then placed an ad in the newspaper for a Saturday sale. Many people remembered her uncle, and the turnout was significant. She gave everyone who came a number, and for the first time, they could choose three items. Judging by the response, she had a very good business. I couldn't believe how much people were willing to pay. Apparently, sex wasn't her only talent. Two months later, I was sitting at the kitchen table when she walked in. Sandy hinted at something more permanent until she stopped about six weeks ago. Small red flags stood up all around the perimeter. I ordered a professional check on her. It was another ceramicist she had been close to when she first learned the craft. They were together at least three times in her studio. I didn't even know the couch in her office was folded out. One look, and she knew. To her credit, she didn't try to beg or bargain. She simply sighed and asked if she could pick up her things before the weekend. I gave her the time she wanted and some money for the time being until her business got on more solid ground. Charlie would like that. The sad truth was that I expected what she would do. 
I researched her past and found that she had one boyfriend and one fiancé whom she deceived. With Charlie, it was business as usual. If she had stayed with Tony and I hadn't interfered, it would have been someone else in the end. Over the next 20 years, she married and divorced four more times, and in each relationship the reason was her infidelity. She even warned the last two, but they still married her. I didn't stay long. I called the headhunter and he got me back in Saudi Arabia in six weeks. I signed two more contracts, increasing my capital. Now he was approaching three quarters of a million, thanks to a smart financial advisor. It was right after the economy crashed and I was looking for a nice house or perhaps an investment property. The realtor showed me some pretty good properties, but they were all unsuitable for various reasons. Then the real estate agent showed me an apartment complex, 12 semi-detached houses in rather poor condition. Structurally, they were sound, but they had not been maintained for a long time. I bought them at a very low price, leaving myself enough money for repairs. I hired contractors when necessary, but did a lot of the work myself, mostly roofing, painting, and flooring. Plumbing and electrical were not my area of expertise, so I left them to the professionals. After three months, eight of them were occupied. After a year, they were all renovated, and I maintained an average of 90% occupancy. The economy improved, and I sold them for four times what I paid for them. I already had another complex that I wanted to purchase if the price was right. It was an inheritance, and the new owner wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. I hoped the cash would convince her. They were in another city, a hundred miles away, but I was used to moving. In fact, I made a deal with the new owners of the apartment that I would get six months free accommodation. I had two months left when there was a knock on the door. It was Sandy, my ex. I haven't seen her for almost four years. She was amazed. What are you doing here? She asked immediately. She still didn't have warm feelings about the way I left her. I live here. What do you want? Well, um, I just moved four doors down from here. I didn't know you lived here. No one was home. And I accidentally locked myself out. My keys and phone are in my purse, so I just knocked on doors until anyone answered. Can I use your phone to call the property management company? Against my better judgment, I let her in and dialed the number for her since I knew it by heart. She talked, explaining her situation, and they promised to send someone with the keys soon. It started to rain, so I let her stay while I started packing. She looked at the photographs on my walls and tables, photos of Charlie, my mom, my stepdad, and my dad, the friends I made in Saudi Arabia, old friends from high school and college that I still kept in close touch with. There was even a photo or two of Chris. She was between marriages at the time I returned, and we started dating again for a couple of months. When I made it clear that I would never marry her, she backed down. Her business was booming, and she was smart enough to cut him out of every marriage. Not a single photograph of me? Sandy sounded kind of hurt, and I couldn't figure out why. None, I replied. I threw them away when I went to Saudi Arabia the first time. They weren't memories I wanted to keep. Hell, I even saw a little tear. Why the hell should it matter? I've never said this before, Mitchell, but I'm sorry. I was terrible to you. I'd like to think I'm a better person now. Looking back, I can't understand why I was so arrogant, so selfish. I'm sorry if you don't want to hear it, but I promised myself if I got the chance I'd tell you. I know we'll never get back together, but life has taught me that karma can be a bastard and I don't want you to hate me forever. I stopped hating her a long time ago. It just wasn't worth the emotional cost. I'll never love her again, to be honest. I just didn't think about her at all anymore. I told her this. This seemed to lift her spirits. It was at this moment that a person from the management company came. Although I didn't look for her when I returned home, old friends sometimes mentioned her. She married again, and this marriage lasted four years. She never again lived in such a nice home as we did, Never had such a comfortable lifestyle as we enjoyed. This seemed punishment enough. Still, I was surprised when she hugged me. I only saw her one more time before she died. In a car accident. She was 42 years old when she passed away. I read the obituary, but did not go to the funeral. I sent a small bouquet without a card in memory of the good years. I went to the city, 
checked into a hotel and waited for a call from the realtor. The next day she called saying the owner wanted to meet me. I was looking out the window at the agent's office when she pulled up in a beautiful Audi. Her long red hair was blowing in the wind, and I had never seen a business suit look so sexy. She was wearing huge sunglasses so I couldn't see her face, but she seemed familiar. When she walked through the door, she stopped, staring at me. She took off her glasses and I recognized her. It was Gloria. The last time I saw her was almost six years ago, in a bar. We burst into smiles and hugged each other, spending the next hour catching up, asking the agent to excuse us for an hour. What happened to you? After our conversation, you disappeared. I wanted more dates. Her shiny white teeth sparkled. I took the advice of the first man I was with in two years who didn't have sex with me. I transferred here after getting a promotion. I found myself a psychotherapist, made good friends, played sports, and, in general, got myself in order. I haven't slept with a man for over two years, and only after we got married. I told him I was worth the wait, and he agreed. We had three good years together. He was a dentist and a reservist. He was called to duty, but even there, he was safe. He died doing voluntary work for the Afghan government, treating children's teeth. The clinic was hit by five RPGs, destroying the building. He was found under the rubble with two living children underneath him. She seemed terribly sad for a few seconds, then smiled. I heard what you did to Tony. This bothered me for a while. I couldn't reconcile the man I knew with someone so cruel, but in the end I understood. I don't know if I would have gone the same way, but I've never been in such a situation. Now promise me that you'll let me cook you dinner tonight and we'll get the agent here. I agreed, and we did it. She wasn't sure if she wanted to sell, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to invest that much money. We decided to put it off, and I went back to the hotel to get ready for the date. She had a really nice house in a very nice area. I estimated it at between four and six hundred thousand, depending on the size of the lot and how nice it was inside. Gloria met me at the door, wearing jeans and a t-shirt, smiling at me and my suit. I should have told you to keep it casual. Take off your tie and jacket. I would have offered you a drink, but I haven't touched alcohol since I left that bar. Would a glass of tea be okay? I had pretty much given up alcohol due to my time abroad, so it didn't bother me at all. She insisted that I help her finish dinner. Once she put the casserole in the oven, she walked me through the house, 11 acres with a stable to match its neighbors, Olympic pool, hot tub, pool guest house, and full gym. I increased my estimate by a third. She was laughing. I know it's a lot for one person, but the fact is I loved this house. Jimmy bought it for me as a wedding gift. She cried a little, and I hugged her. She really loved him. Over dinner, she told me that she almost never used her home gym, preferring to go to the YMCA. She said it helps her stay grounded. I told her everything I've been doing since we broke up. Why didn't you marry again? I shrugged. I've never met someone I liked so much. I had my eye on this fiery, red-haired beauty. But she disappeared on me years ago. I think I've been holding a grudge against her all this time. She laughed taking the joke as it was intended. Then she became serious. I've always wondered what it would be like to be with you. Well, now we're both free. I wouldn't mind being courted by someone I've always warmed to, just know that the chances of separating me from my panties are slim to none, unless we make some serious commitments to each other. That's all. We spent the rest of the evening laughing, feeling comfortable with each other. I helped her wash the dishes. She made me watch a chick flick with her on her giant TV, sitting next to me and holding my hand. That was enough. We entered into a partnership for apartments. For a 50% share, I repaired them and spent every free moment with her. We had some pretty intense make-out sessions, but she held her ground and didn't go any further. This has become our norm over the past six months. Lately, she's been hinting at a deeper partnership and talking about a ticking clock. I have never seen a woman who loved children more, and here I am sitting in this small cafe, mindlessly twirling my wedding ring in my hands. Tonight I was going to propose a formal union, an equal partnership in everything except what she had before us. She built this with her husband, and he deserved that respect.
I was hoping for a couple of additions in the near future. I'm pretty confident she'll agree. I'd ask you to wish me luck, but I suspect I won't need it. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.